Welcome back to Home Video, this is James. The Dirty Dozen. Uh, starring Lee Marvin, Ernest Borgnine, Charles Bronson, John Cassavetes, George Kennedy, Trini Lopez, Telly Savalas, uh, Donald Sutherland. Fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, I mean, check it out. It's you know one of the best war films out there. Uh, this was back in the 60s, but still holds up today. Lee Marvin as Major John Reisman. There's a little of Major Reisman in every man, says Marvin. It's an all-star cast. Uh, I mean, it goes for 144 minutes, but to tell you the truth, it doesn't actually feel like that. It feels like you know 90 minutes. You know, the film so tells you that it's a good film. The time just goes, you know, so. Major Reisman. You are ordered by Allied Command to select 12 general prisoners. You know, the crew, the, the 12 prisoners, they're a bunch of misfits. You know, you've got murderers, rapists, uh, thieves, and... And you will deliver them secretly behind enemy lines in France to undertake a mission of sabotage that could change the course of the war. You know, I found that the supporting cast were really good. You know, they kind of just... They did their job adequately, you know, but I really found that John Cassavetes brought something a little bit more to the role. As Victor Franco says Casavetes. Franco is a petty hoodlum forced to heroism by circumstances beyond his control. We go on that mission, we all get killed. That's what they want! That's what they want! Uh, you know, he himself was a director. John Casavetes said that the only reason why he was acting, acted in films, was to finance his own films. He's got a real kind of melodramatic flair to his, you know, direction, John Casavetes. I, I quite enjoy it. And uh, you know he's and he was married to Gina Rollins, who started in a lot of yeah, films together. I've actually got the uh, box set of John Cassavetes, the collection. Uh, it's a really good collection. He was he was like one of the forerunners or front runners of the independent filmmaking scene back in the 60s and 70s. And uh, Nick Cassavetes, their son, he ended up going on and directing uh, the Notebook. Ryan Gosling, Rachel McAdams, James Garner, Jenna Rollins, in a Nick Cassavetes film. I read to her, and she remembers. The Notebook. So and that's got a real melodramatic flair to it as well, which I've, uh, you know, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, so I think, you know, John, John would have been proud of that, to tell you the truth. But yeah, if you haven't seen any of John Cassavetti's stuff, make sure you check that out. Shadows, directed by John Cassavetes, breaks all the barriers of conventional filmmaking. But, you know, everyone on set was so, you know, kind of admired you know, Cassavetti's kind of work you know, work ethic, you know, his acting kind of style. Uh, even Lee Marvin was kind of enamored by him and uh, he really brought something to to the character. And I don't have to march either, and I know the rules. Why don't you have to march? <laughs> because condemned men don't have to drill. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it, mister. He was one of the characters that I kind of genuinely wanted to you know, escape, you know, get out at the end. George Kennedy's always great. You know, Ernest Borgnine, he's always good in, you know, in movies and that. And then you had things like, you know, Tally Savalas. Tally Savalas as Archer Maggot. You know, he's always weird. It's always creepy, you know. Maggot is a maniac, says Savalas. His religious fanaticism can never be moderated or quelled. So I didn't really care much for him. I kind of thought, well, I don't really care if you kind of don't make it. It is a constant danger. <laughs> It also stars uh, Trini Lopez. Trini Lopez as Jimenez. If I had a hammer, I have work in the morning. As sure as you are born. Uh, and so, you know, he was filming, then the filming was going on for about a year to two years, I'm not sure. It was going on for a while. And um, basically, Frank Sinatra went to Trini and said, Look, Trini, uh, you know, your, your, uh, your music career is on the brink. You better come back. To your music we stop focusing on this on this film. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. And basically Trini got freaked out, so he called the director up and said, you know, I'm, I'm not coming back. He had a few scenes left to shoot uh, towards the end. He basically told the director I'm out. I did what I had to do. So the director basically had to find a way of killing Trini Lopez off, so they parachuted, the dude doesn't parachute it out into the woods and 
Where the hell have you been? We're six minutes late. We've been looking for him and his. And we found him hung up in an apple tree. His neck's broken. You mean he's dead? Trudy Lopez found out that, you know, that's how he died. Regrets. I've had a few. Which is very anticlimactic. And I uh, called the director and said, look, I want to come back and I'll shoot my, my death scene again. Well, you know, I'll, I'll shoot it, you know. Sorry that I bailed. But uh, the director said, sorry, Trini, you're hanging in a tree. I find it all so amusing. So, yeah, they all, you know, they, I won't explore it for you, but, you know, some survive, some don't. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to watch the rest of this now, so watch the ending. So, uh, yeah, see you next time at the Home Video Channel.